Assessment in Medical Education. Nurse me and Parch in learning objectives of the lecture. The importance of assessment. Why assess the student? Who should assess the student? And what should be assessed? How should the student be assessed? Standard setting for the assessment process. When should the student be assessed and where? The importance of assessment. The assessment is important for student, teacher, the course organizer, and also the public. Important decisions are taken about students as a result of the scores they achieve in examinations. Assessment is important, but it's one of the most difficult areas in which to get agreement. Students can walk away for, from bad teaching, but they are unable to do so with assessment. If they are to achieve the qualification, they seek. The fact that assessment is a key and integral part of curriculum development is often not recognized. Assessment should be linked to the learning outcomes and teaching method and seen not only as a testing or measurement problem. Course design and assessment are inseparable. I assess the student, deciding whether he is fit for purpose assessing their progress during the education or training, grading or ranking, identifying the best student among those being assessed, enhancing the student's learning, motivating the student, providing feedback for the teacher, bringing about assessment-led innovation. Who should assess the student? International accredited bodies, national accredited bodies as a general medical council in the UK and national board of medical examiners in US USA, professional bodies as Royal College in the UK, other healthcare professionals, the public and patients, the individual school where the student is enrolled, the department or course committee responsible for teaching the subject, the individual teacher, the students themselves. What should be assessed? A key feature of outcome-based education that assessment is matched closely with the specified learning outcomes. This should be set up in a blueprint that maps each assessment to the expected learning outcomes. What we choose to assess in the education program demonstrates to students what, as teachers, we value. Assessment drives learning. What is assessed becomes for students the learning objective. In the past of emphasis, investment was on the knowledge domain with less attention paid to skills and attitudes. Mastery of knowledge was traditionally regarded as of greater importance than the development of attitudes. Knowledge was also easier to assess than other domains, so there was a natural tendency to assess what was easy and to shy away from area where assessment was difficult. Written assessment, including MCQ papers that tested knowledge domain, dominated assessment practice. Someone 
who can answer correctly at a set of MCQ is not necessarily a good doctor. There has been a move to assess the student more complex achievement, such as higher order thinking, clinical skills, and attitudes. The introduction of OSCE, simulated performance related skills. More recently, the adoption of portfolio assessment and multi source feedback recognized the importance of the assessment of independent learning and self-assessment skills, attitude and professionalism. It's important that assessment do not lag behind what we assess, must closely match what we expect students to learn. Competency-based assessment to move to outcome or competency-based education, doctor will be certified on an assessment of the attained competencies rather than time and training. Assessment tools selected need to be able to assess the student's mastery of the wide range of specified learning outcomes. In competency-based education, assessment should be embedded in the education or training program. A lot of formative assessment as part of the program. Tools will be further developed to better assess on the job competencies. How should the student be assessed? A wide range of tools our instructions are now available to assess the student's competence. Just as important is the way in which the tool is employed. A good tool badly used will yield inappropriate or misleading results. Factors that make a good assessment. The method should be reliable and consistent. Should be valid visible and should have a positive impact on the student's learning. Van der Vluten and Schwartz in 2005 have described the utility or value of an assessment as a function of these features. Utility equal to reliability multiplied by validity multiplied by visibility and multiplied by education impact multiplying by cost effectiveness. Standard setting. It's helpful to think of assessment in two stages. First, Collection of information about the student's competence as at station in an OSCE, for example, in a portfolio or in a written examination. Second, a decision as to whether the student has achieved the standard, ex standard expected. A standard is a st statement of whether student's examination performance is good enough for a pr practical purpose. Standard setting should be adapted which serve as a basis for deciding whether student has reached the standard required to pass the examination. or norm reference standards are based on a comparison of a learner performance with his peers. For example, 75% of learners will pass. Absolute standards in contrast are based on the learner's performance in terms of set criteria. For example, 60% of the MCQs answered will be correct. Much attention has been focused in recent years on methods of determining the standard expected for students in an examination. Should be pass mark be 60% or should be it be 
55% or 65% of questions answered correctly. A range of standard testing methods to determine the passing score for an examination has been employed for written and performance tests based on discussions by a group of subject matter experts. When should the student be assessed? Traditionally, learners were assessed at the end of the course. Increasing emphasis is now being placed on collecting evidence about the learners' achievement during their training or course of study. The reasons for that are, first, without the time constraints of a final examination, a much wider sample of students' performance can be assessed increasing the reliability of the examination. Second, the assessment may be more valid as the assessment tools that can be adapted during the course may assess the learning outcomes that are difficult to assess in an end of course final examination. Third, a key additional benefit of in-course assessment is that it provides feedback to the student and teacher and allow time for remediation. Rigorous test is an approach to assessment where the student's knowledge is repeatedly assessed at time interval through the, uh, throughout the course. Features of this progress test are questions, either MCQ or constructed response items, assess the knowledge expected of students on graduation. This test is comprehensive, covering all the domains of relevant medical knowledge. Students from every year in the medical school set the same examination. The results expected of final year students are very difficult, different from those expected of first year students, of course. Students set the test at fixed intervals and can cover over time chart their development or progress in different domains. Where should the student be assessed? Traditionally, students have been assessed in an examination hall environment using a written, paper, written papers or by formal clinical examinations or in the hospital ward with move towards greater ethnicity in assessment and with assessment seen more as a continuous process increased attention is being focused on assessment in the workplace. Hospitals, community environment, it will be much better.